Hello and welcome. This video was recently shown at the city's 2022 annual Spotlight Breakfast, highlighting the accomplishments and progress made on City Council's strategic plan. Please enjoy. So from an economic development perspective, we talk about opportunity. And in most cases, opportunity comes down to available land. Uh, and as you look across the city, we the city don't own a great deal of property. And what makes the municipal airport uh, uniquely positioned is we've got available land out there. Of course, to develop it, we found ourselves with a problem. And in that problem was a mountain of dirt. Uh, so we spent really the last year removing that, preparing the land for construction, and really ultimately saving time and increasing the interest for an aviation company to come through uh, and to set up and grow their business here. So as we work with these potential tenants, we're excited about the opportunity for additional jobs and economic growth uh, in the city through the Municipal Airport Project. Switching gears, we're near completion of our new EMS substation on 7th and BST, funded by the Department of Defense, Defense Community Infrastructure Program which supports our large economic driver, Fort Huachuca, and really continues the relationship between the city of Sierra Vista and the fort uh, that we've had for many, many years. The substation supports the soldiers and families on Fort Huachuca, and as you'll see next, the community at large. So we're here at the corner of BST and 7th Street. We're really excited. We have a brand new EMS substation, station number four. So having the station here is gonna tremendously benefit the community. It's gonna reduce our response times to the areas that are currently underserved. And because most of our calls are EMS related and not fire, approximately 90% are EMS calls, it allows us to put another ambulance in the system to deal specifically with EMS calls. So having an EMS substation is a humongous benefit. So by the time you see this video, the full, this station will be fully operational. It's gonna be staffed with one ambulance with two EMS personnel, we'll have a paramedic and an EMT. And uh, the station really is state of the art. It has all the latest bells and whistles, um, automation that uh, would reduce cost and energy cost. Um, it has a, a new safety standards for our decon for any kind of hazardous materials or, or uh, biohazards. The personnel will be here 24-7. There is a kitchen area for cooking and, uh, and a nice bunk area for them to sleep at night in between calls. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. It's a beautiful station. Revitalizing the West End continues to be a key focus of the City Council and staff. Looking back on the past year, it's exciting to see the significant progress we've made, but there's still a lot of work in front of us. Revitalizing a business district or a neighborhood is not a single event. Rather, it's an ongoing process and we look forward to continuing our efforts working hand in hand with the community. The most dramatic change this past year was the transformation of Fry Boulevard into a walkable, bikeable street that's visually appealing. Uh, it's also a much safer street that's easier to navigate. Uh, we appreciate everyone's patience and understanding during the construction especially uh, the businesses that were impacted. We did our best to minimize the disruption, keep the lines of communication open and flowing. And a special thanks goes to our West End Commission for making the grand opening ceremony event such a great success. The template's been set for future phases. The next phase will be along North Garden Avenue from Fry Boulevard to Buffalo Soldier Trail. Uh, much like Fry, there'll be landscape areas with trees and shrubs along its borders to help soften the streetscape. Uh, wider sidewalks will connect with our community pathways that link our neighborhoods and parks together. Uh, engineering is now underway to put us in a position to start construction next year. Uh, the West Sierra Vista Partnership Program has proven to be a valuable tool for facilitating private sector investment, uh, North Garden Avenue being a prime example. Uh, two of the major office buildings have been bought and are in the process of being renovated both inside and out. The long-standing vacancies will be filled by businesses who get the vision and want to be part of the turnaround. Office workers and their clients will also contribute to the health of the West End's economy. So the building being built for Tombstone Brewery also took advantage of the partnership program. Uh, the property owner is the same property owner who made the renovations next door at the Best Western Plus. He shares a bullish outlook on Sierra Vista's economy, having acquired another hotel property in the past year. 
So earlier this year, the City Council voted to expand the West Sierra Vista Partnership Program to include all commercially zoned properties west of Fifth Street. Uh, one of the incentives that we offer is matching grant assistance uh, for public art. It's a relatively low cost way to make a positive visual impact on an otherwise nondescript building wall. Uh, you may have noticed that new murals were added to uh, We Frame It and the West End Health Center, uh, who took advantage of the grant program. Uh, we're also big fans of the Hummingbird Stitchers Quilt Guild, who came up with the idea of a uh, quilt block trail here in Sierra Vista. The city's also leveraged our community development block grant funds to make a series of investments in our neighborhood parks on the city's west end. Uh, we recently built a parking lot at Sears Center following the demolition of the old public works yard to support uh, events on our sports fields as well as an expansion to our neighborhood park facilities. We've also installed a new shared use path that ties in with the trail along Soldier Creek. As you'll hear next, the improvements that we're making at Soldier Creek Park and Landwehr Plaza tie into our vision for creating an entertainment district that will help us bring more activities and events to the area. Well, here at Soldier Creek Park, there's such a large green space and it was kind of hidden behind a lot of brush in the wash area that lines North Garden Avenue. And right across from that space, we have a little known park at Landwehr Plaza, which also has a little walking ribbon um, and a nice bathroom with a parking lot for uh, actually RVs also can park there. And we started wondering what it would look like if we tied all this together with the streetscape project and how could and how can we use these spaces to really create a, an event atmosphere on the West End. And so with talking to my partners in economic development, public works, community development, um, we really started to imagine what things could look like and what we really needed. And what we needed was like a large park space. Well, we didn't have a large park that could host events. So we kind of looked at it as a deconstructed large park that we could make some pretty significant improvements and tie them together by closing the street at Taylor and on the north side of Landwehr Plaza and use this entire space as one park area. We have a high side of the area that all the brush was cleared off and we were able to make a walking ribbon up there. So you're seeing the park expansion kind of take place onto the upper side. One of the most popular requests that we get are splash pads. And so we are looking at that top section to see if that's a that would be a great potential site for that as well. And I really think that would round out a beautiful family atmosphere that would attract a lot of attention into this area. And it would also tie it directly into the streetscape project that is going to be attached from Fry Boulevard and come north down North Garden, um, right here to these beautiful park areas. From the top side, if you looked over to the west side toward Fort Huachuca and you see our other little landwear area, that little ribbon is a perfect place for a potential food truck park in the future. The Parks Department will be working on that this year as well. We want to do in connection with the construction of the streetscape project so that at the end of that, you would be looking at an entire project completed. And that would tie everything in from our Fry Boulevard into our North Garden area and just create a wonderful place for people to hang out, have events and get together as a community. The Avenue de Escuela extension project has actually appeared on the city's long range plans for 20 to 30 years, including the traffic circulation plans. It's an important project because right now the ball field area is kind of isolated off by itself. And this will establish an important connection to other major roadways, including down by Walmart. The construction of Walmart about 15 years ago provided some momentum to get the Avenue de Escuela construction project started. Principally, what it did is it provided the first segment of the roadway up past Walmart, and then Walmart also agreed to contribute 50% of the cost of the bridge over to the Domingo Pius Sports Complex. That was huge in being able to fund the project and help get us started. Now, in addition to providing an important connection to area roadways, the Avenida Escuela Extension Project is going to provide a vital link for the city's sports tourism projects. 
Next, you'll hear a little bit more about the city's sports tourism efforts and how this project will facilitate tournaments and events. The way that sports tourism got started was really a quite natural process. Uh, we really took a look at what our volunteer organizations were already doing, what our community was doing, and we tried to figure out what was a way for us to be able to provide some services that would allow them to do more of it. So we took a look at all of the fields and we found that a lot of them had a lot of uneven surfaces. There was poor compaction, poor drainage, would have a lot of standing water. And so we worked with our wonderful park maintenance team who came up with an idea of how to turn the fields into nice fields that needed some work into beautiful tournament ready fields within a 90 day plan. So in 2018, our leagues really started, you know, kind of turning up the volume on hosting tournaments here. And it started with our summer little league baseball and softball. So we have Little League Baseball in town and Little League Ponytail Softball. And they were awarded several tournaments at the district level and at the state level in Sierra Vista beginning in 2018. Prior to 2018, the, the few years before, there really weren't any tournaments here because our fields were not considered tournament quality fields. By turning that around, it gave them the opportunity to do that. And so between the years of just 2018 through 2021, we've seen over a $3.3 million economic impact right here in Sierra Vista, even through a pandemic, um, because we are able to bring people into Sierra Vista. And that's really what sports tourism is. It's, it's a way to use sports to bring people into our communities that then support our, you know, our business industry. And so uh, we were very grateful to them. Um, they, they seem to love it too. It helps them bring awareness to their sport. Their leagues are growing and it's just an all around, all around positive benefit to all of us here who live, work and play in Sierra Vista. Um, and although we've made a tremendous impact on the quality of our field surfaces, the council was generous enough to give us $500,000 to begin our process of replacing porta pots with flushable toilets. But we're very excited, along with the sporting community, to see those installations happen within the next few months. And just focusing on the sports aspect of that project, we're going to see some beautiful enhancements coming to what's now being referred to as the, the Veterans Memorial Sports Complex, which is the former Rothery property located on Martin Luther King Boulevard and Avenida Escuela. We are very excited for that, especially because Avenida Escuela is being punched through right behind Walmart and it will very seamlessly join and create a very easy pathway between our facilities located at Veterans Memorial Sports Complex and Domingo Payas and Stone Complexes. So one stop shopping for all your sports tourism needs. Thank you for watching and again what you just saw were highlights and accomplishments from City Council's strategic plan. City Council puts together the strategic plan every two years and one of the most important documents they review before putting that together is the Sierra Vista general plan. The state of Arizona requires every incorporated city in the state to put together a new general plan every 10 years, and the next renewal is coming up in 2024. But you'll be seeing more on the public engagement process starting next year. So please plan to participate and share your vision for Sierra Vista's future.